Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. I'm going to start using a term used by one of my favorite, absolute favorite YouTubers, uh, someone named Uncle Larry. And for his viewer comments, he uses the term VCB, which just basically means viewer comment bin. So I hope he doesn't mind. I'm going to reach into the VCB and pull out a few to address. Uh, today we have some uh, compliments, some critiques, and some trolling. So I hope you enjoy it. First one comes from someone named JC, which uh, if you stay up to date on what I post and things like that, interested in the channel and whatnot, you know that I've done a video about this already, this particular comment. Uh, and JC says, maybe you should blurb out people's names and comments because it's embarrassing for you to call people out. Think about what this individual is saying. And I would also like, you know, if JC is watching, I would like them to take a close look at the plain, simple English that they're using here. First off, if you read the terms and conditions of the comments field, I specifically ask you not to tell people what to do or not do. Don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. It's presumptuous and it's condescending. If you are the type of person that navigates with honor and grace, then you will abide by my terms and conditions if you're going to comment here. This individual, JC, uh, is not abiding by it and they're violating it. It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. It's about knowing who you're contracting with and what those terms and conditions are and abiding by those terms and conditions. As this is my vessel, it's contingent upon you to comply with the terms and conditions and also be aware of the terms and conditions because they are available to you. 99% of the viewers do comment within those terms and conditions uh, boundaries, those buoys. Whether they read the terms and conditions or not, I have no idea. The only time I address it is when someone like JC uh, voids the terms and conditions, when they disregard them, ignore them, or just blatantly violate them, as, he, as they're doing here. Again, I don't know if JC is a, is a male or a female. So if we take the words, uh, put them together syntactically, it is a fictitious conveyance of grammar, but we are looking at volition here. Maybe you should. So they're telling me what I should do. You, meaning me, I suppose. Maybe you should blur about people's names. So they're telling me that I should blur about people's names in comments because it's embarrassing for you to call people out. Now they're telling me that it's embarrassing for me, meaning I'm embarrassed to blurb out people's names. How would JC know that? One thing I can tell you about me is I very rarely, if ever, get embarrassed. I can't remember the last time I've ever been embarrassed. 
And that comes from my own humble opinion, my great striving to be humble and to cultivate humility. Whether I succeed or not is not up to me to say to you. That's up to you to determine. But for me, I don't get embarrassed. I don't feel embarrassment. Not in this venue. Not in this conduit. What I think perhaps JC is trying to convey, maybe, maybe they got their words mixed up. I don't know. I'm simply guessing. Maybe they meant, maybe you shouldn't, you should not blur about people's names and comments because it's embarrassing for you to call people out. Maybe they mean it's embarrassing for people to get called out. Maybe JC, perhaps, again, this is just a guess, is projecting their personal feelings onto me. Maybe JC is embarrassed because I called them out. And if that's the case, well then, this... <laughs> This viewer comments video is not going to help very much, is it? Maybe that's why you don't get many comments. Maybe that could be. But that's okay. Because I only want people who can get past that. I want people who don't get all up in their feelings. And don't get butt hurt when they get criticized. I want people to get out their big boy or big girl pants and step up onto the carpet and present themselves and hold a position and admit when they're wrong or applaud them when they're correct you know i mean that's people are going to get angry because i use their publicly shared youtube handle well then correct sentence structure at this juncture in the now space is probably not for them maybe down the line when they develop um more, how shall we say, humility, uh, thicker skin maybe, I don't know, um, then maybe they'll be more open and receptive to learning this grammar. But if someone is going to get butt hurt or feel some sort of way or get upset because I critique them in a comments field on YouTube, then how are they ever going to be able to go into a foreign vessel and dry dock and deal with the confrontation of a Vasily who's doing things that are a hundred times worse than what I'm doing here. Do you think that they're going to succeed or fail? This right here is the beginning. Just the very beginning. And if this trips you up, <laughs> I got news for you. You got some extremely difficult challenges ahead, JC. Positive volition and energy. Don't be a jerk. I see. So JC thinks that I'm a jerk. Uh, that's implied there. Putting down people. So I'm not putting down people. I'm critiquing grammar. And I'm offering solutions as to how to correct the grammar. If JC, like Russell J. Gould, gets all up in their feelings because I correct their grammar, then that tells me a lot about their strength or lack of strength of character. And also their knowledge level of grammar gives an indicator of that as well. Because someone who had closure on the grammar would not respond like this. There was a time you were a novice too. Yes, yes there was. Yes there was. And I learned the hard way through trial and fire how to set those emotions aside and to be able to move forward without taking anything personal. You're doing a good job teaching, though. Ah, so they're trying to put in a little backhanded compliment at the end to try and smooth things over, which is fine. You know, I don't, it doesn't, it's not affecting me in any sort of way. I'm not taking this personal. I think it's funny. Because to me, in my perception, it's just more uh, comment on JC's mental condition as state as far as learning. I mean, if they're going to get upset about me critiquing their attempt at writing correct sentence structure in the comments field, then I can't imagine how they would react if we were doing a one-on-one -on -one workshop. <laughs> They'd probably abandon ship. But that's just a guess. Thank you for the comment, JC. Next comment comes from Sovereign Entity. Which, it's an interesting name. Because... 
there really is no such thing as a sovereign in this domain. Because in order to be a sovereign, you would have to create your own money, your own monetary values. You would have to create your own fuel sources. You would have to create your own food sources. You would have to have your own uh, land and be completely self-sufficient and not participate with any other type of system or currency or fuels or, or food sources. So there is really no such thing as a sovereign physically. You, of course, could be a spiritual sovereign, of course, but not like an actual sovereign. And an entity, of course, is a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, particle of negation. So it's a sovereign, no titty. <sighs> From a place of grace, honor, and peaceful neutrality, what is your reason for criticizing Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould so much? Please clarify this volition. Well, sovereign entity, I have done that exact thing multiple, multiple times across multiple videos that I've done, reaction videos that I've done in the Coral Blade Grotto broadcasts on this channel. I've said the reason why. I'm bringing these things to the light. I don't know if bringing such things to the light maybe bother you. Maybe you're personally invested in Russell J. Gould's construct. I don't know. Maybe you've dished out some money to him for a live life, for an incorrect live life claim. I don't know. I don't know what, what, your, what your volition is behind wanting to know this when I've already given that closure multiple times. And of course, I'm going to give it again here with the balance of the honor and the grace. Um... The reason why I bring so much of this to light is because no one who has viewed this channel has access to these videos, which is everyone, everyone on planet Earth, as far as I know, if you have an internet connection and you have a YouTube account, can access this channel. It's public. They cannot say that they were not warned about Russell J. Gould. They cannot say that I have not shown them that he uses incorrect grammar, that he has modified the 1 by 1.9 flag, that there are numerous, multiple, countless contradictions across what he says and what he does, that there's literally no certification or proof of any of the claims that he's made about the Supreme Court or anything else. The Postmaster General thing, I, I showed in a video you just have to look it up, Sovereign Entity. I showed in a video his claim of being Postmaster General. He literally wrote in cursive his name across a stamp. And if you're writing in cursive, it's the same thing as um, italics. Or, uh, yeah, italics. It's not on the page. And it's cursing if you believe in that sort of thing. So... That claim is void. Plus, you have to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar to make a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel, court, venue. And in those same videos, I have showed time and time again that he does not use correct grammar. It's not mathematically certified. It's not correct sentence structure. And it's certainly not the correct sentence structure flag because it has a spire finale on top of it, which modifies the contract of the flag. It's no longer a correct sentence structure flag. So the reason my volition for doing these things, bringing these things to light, is that so that people such as yourself can make an informed, educated choice on whether to go into what he's doing and try and get involved with him or to avoid it like the plague because it is a pitfall, a landmine that could potentially and probably blow up in your face eventually and do much more harm then it would do good. That's my volition. To make people aware of a pitfall, of a danger, of a derelict vessel, of a fiction entity that masquerades as quantum gobbledygook. There you have it. Long and short of it. For the umpteenth time, why I criticize Russell J. Gould's grammar so much. I concentrate on the grammar. Okay? As far as him and his character... I do have my opinions about that from my own personal experience and 
you know, the collective experience of other people that I know in the confidential that know him personally. I do have my opinions on that, but that's not important here. What's relevant here is the grammar, and he does not use correct grammar. That's the reason. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Jazz Cha, and they say, Good evening, Mr. Jason. My name is Hebby. I am writing to you from Argentina. Could you tell me if there is any way to learn quantum grammar directly in Spanish? I thank you in advance for any information that you can provide me in this regard. Very kind. And that's a Google translation. And it's a pretty damn good translation if I don't, uh, don't say so myself. I did give Kuliana back to uh, Heb using a video where I did a special message for Spanish talkers, okay? But I will address it again here. There are a couple ways that you can go about learning correct sentence structure, Heb. The first way would be to find a Spanish-speaking correct sentence structure tutor. And then, of course, they can easily teach it to you because I'm guessing Spanish is your native tongue. That's easy, right? Well, it would be easy if you knew one. I personally don't know any Spanish tutors that teach correct sentence structure. I don't. And I've spoken with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all over the earth. I don't even know anybody who knows somebody who knows somebody that knows that. So as an option, the second option would be to learn correct sentence structure from an English speaking tutor such as myself. If you have enough English knowledge to cognize what I'm saying, if you do, then you can get closure on the grammar in English first, and then you yourself can transship that over to Spanish. And then you yourself would do the translating. That's the second option. Now, there are, is another option which was explained to me by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller during the last year of his life, where he said that you can basically use the plain English position, lodials, and verbs and conjunctions and then put in your Spanish facts. Okay? So you could say something like... Um, Let's see, if you say, for the cat of the black, for the cat of the black, just for example, for the cat of the black, you could use, for the gato of the negro, use a Spanish fact with the English positionals and lodials. Hope that helps, Heb. Contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen there uh, if you want to learn correct sentence structure from an English tutor, such as myself. Um, I'll have you know that many of my most successful students, English isn't even their first native tongue. So it is very possible to learn this grammar even if you're not very good at plain English. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from someone named Avo. Nice nom de guerre. And they say re, which in the fiction means regarding the late quote unquote Miller. I would be most interested to see a copy of his claimed 62nd degree Freemason member status. And then they put a monkey at the end there. Now, anybody who's watched one video of David Wynn Miller that's that nine-hour video, and I think just about any other video that he's in where he's doing a seminar, when he's introducing himself, he always introduces himself as a 92nd degree Mason. I've never heard him say he was a 62nd degree Mason. But be it that as it may, let's, let's uh, look at the volition behind the question or guess what the volition is. They would be most interested to see a copy of his claim, 62nd degree Freemason member status. How would you get one of those things, Avo? I mean, I'm not a Freemason. 
I have spoken with Freemasons, but I don't know any Freemasons well enough to know whether they get like a certificate of authenticity for their degree. Each time they get a degree, I don't know if they get a certificate, you know, like you get a, a graduation certificate, a diploma, whatever. I don't know if you get that or not. I have no idea. Is that what you're talking about? Because I don't know if you're a Mason or not. Maybe you know something I don't know about it, which is entirely possible. Because I'm not a Mason. Maybe you are. But how would one certify that? I really, I really don't know. So I did give Kuliana to Avo to their comment, basically saying what I just said uh, a little bit ago there. And then they corresponded back. They said, so just his claim then, nine hours, meaning the video that, that I mentioned. I wrote this idiot off after five minute. Five is more than one, so minutes would be plural, Avo into some video where he was at pains to assert his extraordinary level validated only by some alleged involvement he also claimed to the NASA's moon landings. Avo, I really don't know what you're talking about there. I do know what I do know the evidence that David gave to certify or back up his claim of 92nd degree Mason. And that is that he took this book, Masonic, Hermetic, Kabbalistic, and Rosicrucian Symbolical Philosophy, Manly P. Hall, Secret Teachings of All Ages. He took this book and he syntaxed it and then he rewrote it in his version of correct sentence structure, i.e., he wrote it to his knowledge level of correct sentence structure. And that is why he claimed 92nd degree Mason. Because he took that book to the, he was already a Freemason. He made no secret of that. And allegedly, his father was a Mason, his mother was an Eastern Star. But he took that. And showed that book that he wrote, he rewrote, and the syntax version to the Masons, and then thus became a 92nd degree Mason based upon knowledge. His words, not my words, his words, which you can find in a video. I'm pretty sure it is the nine hour video, but this guy claims to have only watched five minutes of the video, and they've already made a mistake, a mistaken correlation. David never correlated his opinions about moon landings to his degree in masonry. So it's almost this Ava guy, you know, just my Ava guy or girl, whatever they are. Um, with my perception, it appears as they're just trying to th throw poop against the wall and see what sticks. Because that makes absolutely no sense. And it shows me that they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to David Wynn Miller. Because they've only watched five minutes of a video and claim that David is an idiot after watching five minutes. And that's very interesting because I don't know if Avo has created a complete, whole-ass, mathematically certified grammar technology. Or if not created it, at least published it. All right? And done thousands of hours of study with it. I mean, I don't know if Avo has or hasn't. My guess is that they haven't because what's the first knee-jerk reaction most times for people who don't understand something? They don't understand something and it's unknown to them. They dismiss it. They write it off. They attack it. They minimize it. They insult it. They've done all those things. They call David an idiot, which is an ad hominem attack. It's a logical fallacy. It shows that whoever the individual is that's making these insults and claims doesn't know what they're talking about. So they're trying to reach for distractions to keep people off track. That's my experience. I really don't see how this is any different, though. Anyone that resorts to ad hominem attacks, I mean, that's just, that just shows me their mental condition of state right off the bat. So... Um, Thinking he would come clean, he went on to commending the whole event as though it actually happened. The moon landing, whether it actually happened, who cares? I mean, I don't. 
92nd degree. Try 26 Freemasons are the fallen scum of this realm. See, more ad hominem attacks. You need to drop, find, 8 inches per mile squared over an apparent horizon somewhere if you're hoping to redeem that loser's credibility or a belief you ever lived on NASA's water world ball. Now they turned it into a flat earth thing, which they've gone completely outside the subject matter. They've thrown in a red herring, another logical fallacy, which means that this individual knows that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So they're trying to distract from the topic at hand, which is David Wynn Miller's self-proclaimed 92nd degree of masonry. Next, Avo comments, I know I know nothing, especially so since I started doing my own research. Knockdown 19 scam. Whatever the hell that means. However, I do have enough discernment to spot a lying sack of chite having made my own observations about the kind of things you might trust a Freemason or government puppet to provide you with. So after five minutes of watching a nine-hour David Wynn Miller video, this AVO individual thinks that they have enough knowledge to judge a man and his volition. That tells me a lot about this AVO individual because that is a complete and utter violation of simple judge mechanics of rule one rule equal because if you are going to have the authority to be a judge of your own domain you have to follow judge mechanics and the first rule of judge mechanics is to establish knowledge get the whole story rule one rule equal don't just make a snap judgment based on five minutes if there are nine hours of evidence then you watch and observe the entire nine hours if you're syntaxing a document you do the whole document you have to take the whole story into consideration before you make a judgment simple rule one rule equal judge mechanics which AVO hopefully if they're listening to this um, they'll learn a little something about it but it doesn't appear, and this is a guess on my part, it does not appear that AVO is interested in learning correct sentence structure. It's definitely apparent that they have no correct sentence structure knowledge at all. And if, and if they're interested in it, it's only from a periphery theoretical point, not a practical point. They have no idea what correct sentence structure is or what it does, obviously. So, again, what do people do with things that they don't understand or don't know about normally? They dismiss them, they minimal, minimalize them, they denigrate them, insult them, write them off, with no proof, of course. Because the only way to prove that something doesn't work is to learn it, get closure on it, try it, and fail at it. It's that simple. North the Americas ceased to exist around 1492, redesignated the new world as in order. Ah, this, this individual likes to play fiction word games. That's hilarious. I bet they've, I, this is a guess, I bet they've, they're a big fan of the Golden Web series on YouTube. Um... Today, Babylon and all WEF agenda-branded demons, ooh, demons, ooh, will go to hell with their drag queens. Miller and his little colon period colon what? Ego grammar nonsense is just another one of their monkey ball spells. Yeah, yep, this individual definitely has no closure or knowledge of correct sentence structure and choose instead like individuals like Romley Stewart, choose to attack it because for whatever reason, they lack the capacity to cognize it. They just don't possess the neurological pathways to even begin to know what correct sentence structure is. And so therefore, they won't learn it, can't learn it. So what do they do? They attack it. I've seen it countless times over the years.
sovereign nation considered using it. I know elements of it didn't pass their team's thorough scrutiny and rejected it. I can guarantee you, Avo, that whoever sovereign nation is, they don't know the grammar. And so if they don't know the grammar, how can they test the grammar? That's like watching a mixed martial artist, you know, fight. Okay? And they look at it and say, no, nah, they're not successful, even though you yourself don't know how to fight. But I bet you if you get in the MMA cage with a mixed martial arts fighter, you'll find out how effective it really is. But that'll never happen. A teacher gets a stricter punishment. Perhaps arrogance has your brain thinking you're a slightly more evolved ape. Oh, now they're name-calling me, saying that I'm arrogant and that I'm an ape. Hmm. FYI, Light Bear Lucy for you, Monkey92, because he said so. Newsflash, they already had your brain frozen at the 33rd degree. I am the dust and nobody is beneath me. I don't know what the realm lies beyond the outer 66th parallel. Unboundary, but I am certain it's not more of a spinning ball. Cognitive dissonance is your pain epiphany. And Miller is at much closer. Hell, NASA, absolute zero. Wow. I have no idea what this, this individual is going off to. They're obviously, by my perception of my experience with this type of commenter, they're not interested in correct sentence structure, so they don't belong here, number one. Number two, they're violating my terms and conditions, so they are a malicious contract party, which... I'm going to jettison them, of course. Um, and they're using fiction, religious, gobbledygook, uncertifiable claims of, that religious zealots use. You know, your imaginary friend is, is more real than my imaginary friend type of bullshit. Um, and using word games. So, Avo is now categorized as a fiction babble troll who has no knowledge of what it is they're talking about. No, okay. Stop and correct. They show no evidence of knowledge of what it is they're talking about, especially relating to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So why are they here? I don't know. Probably to try and get people to participate with the BS that they're promulgating. But the reason why I'm putting this in the comments video is to the same reason that I criticize Russell J. Gould's grammar. Is to show you, the viewer, a pitfall. To show you a landmine. And it's your choice to avoid it or not. If you choose to participate with the presumptuous and assumption-based uh, things, topics, that someone like Avo would talk about, then you're going to probably find a lot of your now space taken up by a bunch of imaginary stuff that you can't certify. However, if you choose to avoid that landmine, avoid that pitfall, avoid that now space vampiric activity, and you choose instead to learn correct sentence structure and only participate with things you can certify as facts, I think you'll be much more successful in protecting and safeguarding your biosphere and vessel construct. So, after that last comment, I said, well, thank you for showing your true colors. Another member of the I know everything and I don't have to honor your terms, conditions, North American, I'm guessing. That is the comment that I wrote in response. And what I meant by that is, they showed their true colors, that they're not here to learn the grammar. They're just here to, I guess, maybe confuse, create, you know, muddy the waters and talk about things that have nothing to do with grammar. And it goes along with that video on etiquette that I was talking about, how North Americans, the majority of North Americans that I've experienced uh, communication with have this type of attitude. Where they say, oh, this person's an idiot. Or you're stupid if you don't believe that. Globetard. Libtard. 
they use name calling ad hominem attacks and that those are logical fallacies those are low hanging and those are for people who want to argue when the facts are present no argument is necessary but people like that they use it for arguments so then they say completely absurd statement nation gnyy stands with a constitution and testament of jesus what the hell is a jesus so if nation gnyy stands with a constitution and testament of an imaginary fictional character well then i'd have to say that nation hyphen gnyy is a fictional entity we have already rejected district of columbia what's a columbia <laughs> and then satan okay so this is another one of those religious uh my imaginary friend is greater than your imaginary friend type of deal and they have no place in a correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar context once again das vidanya evo and the final comment comes from colon spencer hyphen data hyphen miller colon field and they say no pain equals no gain always love the psychological clarity and closure thank you for your kind words spencer thank you for your membership and it's people like spencer that i do these videos for that i create content for people who are honorable graceful respectful who honor the terms and conditions of this vessel they don't come on name calling people they don't go telling people what they should or shouldn't do there are plenty of other places on the internet to do that to exercise your ego this place is a place void of ego because it's about grammar and spencer is definitely about the grammar and he's one of my favorite students thanks for watching that about does it for this one thank you very much for watching if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen i will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me you can ask me whatever you like and i'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to if you'd like to support the channel click on the join button underneath this video there are two tiers of membership uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public once again thank you for watching hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because i do post on a very consistent basis there are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and i'll see you in the next one